All right. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about Zapier. Um, I use a lot of Zaps. Uh, I don't know to donate a free account. I need not to promote them by putting them on a website somewhere. Um, I'm actually paying for Zapier now because it gets me a little bit speedier response. Uh, the free account runs every 15 minutes and the uh, paid account runs every five. Um, I'm sitting here in the dark. Sorry about the low video quality. won't matter momentarily. I'm just going to walk you through my Zapier account to give you some idea of what I'm doing because a lot of people have been asking. So here we are in the Zapier account. I'll put it up there. Uh, you get to organize your zaps by, by folders. So at my top level, I only have two zaps, and that is uh, I have this spreadsheet called Master Story, and it is uh, a list of all the stories that I'm going to import to NPSP Data Importer. And I've covered that in another blog, so I won't go into that in detail. But um, this one zap imports all of those to the NPSP uh, Salesforce importer. And then I have another zap that actually takes the same stories and makes sure that an offline Facebook event is created so that we can target and pay attention to people we know on social media who are also interacting with us through other means. So those are actually the only two top level stories I have. Some people want to know what it looks like to import something into um, Salesforce, so I will load that master story. And this master story gets run uh, quite frequently every day. Um, so when a row is added to a spreadsheet and it's added by other zaps, um, it's the only way anything gets in there. But when a new or updated spreadsheet is in there, is added, um, we do a couple things. First thing, we truncate the internal comment because the comment can be longer in um, in spreadsheet than it can be in the MPSB data importer, and I want to have it crash, so I use a, a string function in Zapier to truncate that. And then uh, the only way you can import automatically is through the MPSB batch import jobs, and I define several because I have different strategies for how I want to match. And so I have, to, based on the story, that's in the spreadsheet back up here, uh, which is the first column. Uh, based on the story, I won't show you sample data because it would be somebody's specific data. But anyway, based on the story, we pick up, we decide what batch job we're gonna, what batch job we're gonna use for the MPSP data importer. And so this is what we call a table lookup. It looks up based on the story. It looks up the batch job and. And in this case, it's it really is kind of grotesque. It's just it's just a lookup table based on the story key. Uh, in this case, uh, somebody was volunteer sign up based on the story key. We decide what we're going to use, and you know, and it's literally the object ID of the MPSB data import story. And there's default. So anyway, and then the action is. Um, the next the next thing we have to do is we have to set a default because unfortunately um, MPSB data importer expects true or false in a particular field in fact called send receipt which is a custom field that I, I added but um, and I want blank to mean yes send the receipt so I had to change blank into a true in order to get this to run right. And then finally, it creates an MPSP uh, Salesforce custom object. And all it does is transfer all the fields from the spreadsheet into the object. And, and then later, Salesforce runs that at night. Anyway, that's kind of how that works. And so you can see kind of how it is to, to do a zap. Um, so, uh, I have a number of Gmail zaps. Um, we get email receipts from Click and Pledge, and we actually extract those and add them to the master story. Um, I do. I send an email every single day, and so I actually create 
uh, it's kind of an operational email. I actually create the draft in my drafts folder you, um, with the time and the date and the subject all set up for me so that all I have to do is go to my draft folder and it's there and I edit it and send it. And then um, we uh, pick up emails from my inbox and put them in a spreadsheet to be part of our, our um, prayer tool. Um, this is just sort of a legacy system, but nevertheless, that's how we do that. Um, we have a whole bunch of zaps that handle donations. We we uh, support lots of donation channels. However, our donors want to give, we let them um, amplify Austin donations, go into a spreadsheet. And this particular zap translates from the spreadsheet format that we receive it in to the spreadsheet format for our master import stories. Um, click and pledge donations, same thing. Uh, anyway, we, we have a number of, here's a PayPal instant channel. Um, we go from PayPal straight to our master story. Um, anyway, we just have a number of channels that work this way. Um, This is our web sign up folder, and we have a whole bunch of forms online. And they, all of those forms dump into a particular spreadsheet, and then we monitor that spreadsheet and, um, and do something. In this case, uh, this is our security solution. We have a, if you fill out a form that says, I want to update my email, my contact information, you have to match one of the existing contacts. And in this particular case, we're matching against. Uh, alternate email, personal email, or work email. And if it matches, if we can find you, we send you a link to actually update your information with all the pre-filled info. Um, here we have a form, you know, wanting access to our Dollar Tree wish list. And so uh, the form dumps data in the spreadsheet, and then we do some things to it and email the person the response. Um, Here's a uh, form on, you know, uh, Facebook, and we download that form and put it in a spreadsheet, and then we take care of manipulating it and putting it into our master story import. Um, here's our biggest form online. It's a, a join us automatically. I mean, it's, sorry, it's a, a join us form, allows you to pick lots of check boxes and get on lots of campaigns and newsletters and receive follow-up cases. And so that form dumps data into a spreadsheet and then we process it and turn it into many lines in our story, um, master story form. So anyway, you get the idea that we have lots, that what we've, what we've chosen to do is go from web to spreadsheet, spreadsheet to Zapier, Zapier to master story import and, um, that way we, we are getting cleansing our data and eliminating lots of duplicates. I do use Zapier with Trello, um, mostly to demote things from our daily scrum. If we haven't done them today and marked them off, then maybe they weren't so important there, so we, we move them to soon. And if they're not soon, we move them to uh, next day, next seven days. And from next seven days, if we don't do them soon, we move them to soon. Um, and then we are using it with Twilio also. Um, Twilio does a connect with Zapier. So anyway, that's just kind of what we're doing. Um, I know we're, we're really happy with it. We're, um, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can show, uh, we're, we're, we're automating about a thousand zaps a month or so, a thousand, thousand things a month. I'm not sure I can show that, uh, on the dashboard here, but they send us an email every month that says we do about a thousand things a week. I'm sorry, I misspoke. About a thousand things a week with Zapier. So we're getting a lot of productivity out of it. Um, took a little while to learn, but it's really general purpose and allows us to stay uh, small but mighty. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.